Hi, my name is Naveed with Sight and Sound Systems. Today we're going to go over setting up a speaker wall plate that we provide for a lot of our new construction homes. If you have this option, hopefully this presentation will help you with setting up your speakers to your surround receiver. The tools and materials that you're going to need for the, to complete this project is a cable stripper, a razor knife, a small flathead screwdriver, and a sharpie. Cabling is, for most of our options, requires a 16 gauge speaker cable. So when you go to the store to buy new cabling or speaker cabling for your surround system, you can buy either a two conductor or a four conductor speaker cable. That just means how many ends are on the cable. And on a four conductor cable, you have a red jacketed cable, a black jacketed cable, a white, and a green. Now the red is usually a positive for a right channel speaker and black is negative. The white is also going to be positive for a left channel speaker and the green is going to be negative. If you don't have a four conductor cable you can double up on the number of two conductor cable that you have so you would just have red and black and then you would label this cable right and then you would do red and black and then you would label the next cable left. In a surround sound system if you have five channels you would have uh, right, left, center, surround left, and surround right. And if you have a seven channel surround system you would also have a back left and back right as well. So if you were using this two conductor cable you would have seven of these cables in a seven channel surround system or five cables in a five channel surround system. If you have four conductor cable you would need only three of these or five of them. A lot of times when you go to the store to buy these cables they're going to be bare and they're not going to be stripped which is why we're going to need the razor knife to take the jacket off of this and the cable stripper to get it so that you get the copper exposed on these cables. So first what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and strip off this outside jacket of this cable. So using a razor knife carefully just cut the outside strip. You can see just the outside of the cable is cut now. And I just pull this off There's usually a pull string inside here. Not always. Cut that off too. And then if you're using 16 gauge cable, if you look at this wire stripper, it says stranded. The 16 is right there. I want to go ahead and cut off a quarter of an inch off the end of the cable. I'm just going to do that for all four of these. It doesn't have to be exact, but you just want to take off just a little bit off the end. And then you want to twist all these ends so that the tip doesn't fray so much. This is a block that comes off of the wall from the wall plate that we provide. You have a right positive, a right negative, a left positive, and a left negative. So what I want to do is I want us to take the red and put it into the right positive. I'm going to take my small screwdriver, twist it into here, and tighten it. The next one's going to be right negative. So that's going to be my black cable. I'm going to tighten it down. Left positive. It's going to be my white cable. And left negative, which is going to be green. Now it's very important to note that I don't have any strands sticking out of the back of this. If you do have any strands, you want to take this out, unscrew it, take the copper, twist it up again, put it back in so that there's no thread sticking out, Tighten it up again. 
this is going to prevent the copper from touching the negative to the positive, which could possibly damage your receiver. So just make sure nothing is crossing each other. So this is how it should look. Again, green is going to be left negative, white is going to be left positive, black is going to be right negative, and red is going to be right positive. Now if you have two sets of two conductor cable, it's just going to be red, black, red, black. And just label on the cable which one is right and which one is left. On this cable, I'm just going to go ahead and label it. And I'm going to do the same for the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and strip this side as well. Now this side is going to be the side that plugs into the receiver. The other side with the block is what's going to plug into the wall. The only difference with this side is typically you want to strip the tips a little bit longer to about a half inch and twist the ends. So this is approximately how long the jacket is supposed to be stripped off of the cable. So it would be about a half inch, maybe a little bit longer. Okay. So I want to go ahead and do the same thing for the other cables as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and label them surround. On one side I'm going to strip just about a half inch off the end of the cable. And the other end of this cable, I'm going to label it as surround as well, too, and again, strip off about a half inch of cable off of that. The only tricky one is the center channel speaker. We usually used the left ports of the block, so left positive and net left negative. So again, only about a quarter inch should be connected in the left positive and left negative with no strands sticking out of the back of the cable. So I'm just going to tighten that in. So now I have three sets of cables. On one side of each set of cable, I have these blocks on the ends, and they're labeled as center surround and front and on the other end of the cable again they're labeled as center surround and front 